John, I'm sure you've heard this phrase, bidding against yourself. <laughs> it's become a catchphrase in the media over the last couple of years, and I think it can be overstated because if you're a team and you know that you want the player and you can figure out what is a good and fair contract that you can afford and get the job done, does it really matter if somebody else, the next closest bid was $8 million less or $10 million less? Is that something that you take into consideration? Did you while you were doing this deal with Matt Holliday? Well, you absolutely do. I think the the difference, though, in in this process than maybe a more traditional one was that I don't I don't know what our underbidder was, and and frankly, I don't think he had a whole lot of options to go to, especially as we sit here on January seventh. The thing we were trying to accomplish was get to a number and a length that we could still do, and he would accept, rather than we just sit somewhere that ultimately he would reject. And we wouldn't get the player. And it came down to us looking at really the acquisition cost of acquiring somebody like this. Or maybe the other way to think about it is the acquisition opportunities to acquire a player like this. I mean, first off, St. Louis Cardinals are never leaders in the free agent market in terms of being able to go out and and make the most robust offer and sign somebody typically. And number two, when you think about trying to trade for a player of this ilk, they're not readily available. And, and frankly, guys of his age typically sign as a four-plus long-term, and they buy out three or four of their free agent years. So we looked at this as a unique opportunity, one that we do think the market fell in our direction. But in all candidness, I think if we tried to sit on a five- or six-year deal, he takes one, one-year deal somewhere else, and it's not here. Did it help you a little bit that Jason Bay signed earlier than Matt Holiday? No, not really. I, I I think a lot of this was independent of one another. In a lot of ways, I, I think it it may have hurt because in the agent's mind and in the player's mind, there was a you know some sort of separation on talents. And you know, I think obviously uh, Bay got a very good contract in terms of dollars and, and the comfort level there uh, to do what they did. So I didn't really feel like this was something where we were just we just kept moving the needle, moving the needle, trying to get a deal done. This was something we made a very good offer early, and we we pretty much stuck to it. I wanted to ask you what all our our callers and fans have been asking in a few years when Albert Pujols is up, um, will the Cardinals be able to afford him? Well, it just depends on on what the number looks like. I mean, obviously, when you when you do a deal like we did today with Matt, we were looking at at the future, at least securing a, a offensive player that we view as, as someone highly talented and, and one of the better hitters in the game of baseball. Uh, figured it would be a great compliment to, to Albert Pujols and. Hopefully, uh, when it does come time to try to sign him long term, that we can come up with something that that mutually benefits everybody. That we can still put the right complementary players around that core group. 